right, hello, 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 hello. Hopefully everybody's uh, that wants to watch is coming soon. I'm actually gonna pull up the chat here so I can answer questions today. Oh, let's see here. All right. We got a couple people. We got a couple people on on Facebook. A couple people on YouTube. All right, who's watching? Where y'all from? Let's hear it. Well, I get everything prepped here. Well, I'm pretty prepped, but in place, I should say. All right, we got DJ, Chris, Ray, Suzanne. For some reason, it doesn't tell me everybody, but we'll, uh, we'll get there. How's the vet, the sound? Everybody hear it clearly? I left one swamp cooler running over there so if it's too whatever let me know hey james is watching from phoenix arizona west phoenix i bet it's nice and warm over there huh james <laughs> all right chris in alabama charles charles is in rio rancho new mexico my brother lives in rio rancho new mexico small world all right sound is good We'll give it just a sec here, and then we are going to get going. Um, anybody watch the uh, live streams I did for Record Power any of the last two days? I did two live streams that went to the U.S., the U.K., Europe, Russia, South Africa, New Zealand, Amsterdam. It was pretty fun, but it was very tiring. So uh, if you watched any of those, hopefully it was good. Let me know if you did. I'm just curious how it looked from... The other end all right we got looks like Nina in Los Angeles and Chase Lee Michael and Bruce hey Bruce Bruce hope you're enjoying your new machine <laughs> oh man Big Bear sounds really good right now I'm it's only like peaking the hundreds here on a regular basis and I'm already ready to go north for the for the summer go camping and sit in the forest but it comes quick every year all right we got Peter hey Pete so what I'm gonna do today guys a little different uh, we are gonna use the lathe but I'm not actually gonna be turning um, the pen because you've seen a lot of pens be turned and if I do it every time then there won't be excitement when we turn it right but more importantly we're gonna focus on building a blank Kind of a cool, easy way to build a blank. If you've seen me do this before, I apologize, but uh, it's really cool and it continually seems to spark interest and people don't know about it, so I just want to show it off again. Uh, hey, we got, oh, I don't even say your name, I blow it up, Ojan in uh, Norway, that's pretty cool. And Judy, Jody, sorry, I'm looking across the room here. But uh, pretty cool, indeed. Oh, he's trying to call me. All right. So, let's get going here. Let me show you what we're gonna do and why we're gonna do it. Basically, we are gonna use a inlay material to make a really cool blank. And by really cool, I mean just something different. So. My goal with pen making is always to kind of just elevate it in some little way. It doesn't have to be something super dramatic or super complicated, but if you can just do something to take it up a notch, that's perfect. And this material and this type of thing is really cool. Hey, Heather, how's it going? We're jealous of you now. She's up in Alaska. Um, and I, this is the same thing I did the last two days uh, for record, and it was really fun to make these. So when I made, uh, I'm going to show you here as I talk about it. What, I, what I'm going to use is a material that we have here at Turner's Warehouse. It's just called segmenting material. Uh, and by the way, if anybody wants to know about anything I talk about, on the front page of Turner's Warehouse, there's a, a collection that says Record Power Live Sessions Supply List. That's everything I'm going to talk about now. So uh, you don't have to go search for it. It's all right there, including the glue and the lathe and every, everything I talk about. So you don't have to worry about it. But the material is pretty cool. It's three layers. It's a aluminum, plastic, aluminum. 
and it comes in two widths, two millimeter and three millimeter. And it's really cool because it, sometimes it replaces a saw blade cut perfectly. And what I mean by that is my table saw blade is about three millimeters and my miter saw blade is about two millimeters. So if I make a cut and I glue in that material, my material is the same size. So if I'm doing something like a Celtic knot, which I'll talk about in just a sec, I can make the cuts, replace the material, rotate it, and the block is still the same. So if I'm using a stop, it's a lot easier and I don't have to worry about adjusting my gauge or my, my fence or anything like that. So it's really cool. Let me grab my water. I've been talking a lot. Okay, so for pens, what we're looking at is like this. Here's some examples. Now, you guys saw me, um, or you probably saw me, I should say, make this one a couple weeks or a month or two ago with the Fordite, the Micarta, and the Fordite. And that material in the middle is what I'm talking about right, right now, the segmenting material. And that's three millimeter. This one is two millimeter. So I don't know if you can see the difference there, but it's quite a bit thinner, even though it's only one millimeter. And now this one is one I made yesterday. It's kind of unique. It's got uh, one of Jen Early's color blanks in here the material and then coco bolo on each end and you can see i did a thick and a thin and then this one is just a really cool burl blank and i just cut it and inserted the material and it just gives it a little something more uh, a burl blank is fine there's nothing wrong with it but it kind of just elevates it or changes it up so it may be something you can do and that, here's another one from yesterday uh, and this one came out really good this has a ca finish on it and it was a burl and it was scraps. So this wasn't a whole blank. This was pieces that I had and I'm gonna show you the, the process of making it. But this was just chunks of cutoffs that I didn't wanna throw away because they were cool. And now I've got a pen that I can sell, give away, use, whatever. That's really kind of elevated and cool looking. So that's what we're after here. Now, something that everyone likes to see uh, and I didn't have the pen there, is the Celtic knot. So if you've never made a Celtic knot, this is what it looks like. And by, by adding, hey, what's that crafts by Bruce? Is that a tip, Bruce? I've never seen that before. I didn't even know you could do that. Thank you. That's pretty cool. Check Bruce out. He just uh, did that. Uh, but anyway, this is a Celtic knot. This was one of my first few, and I think I did a video on this, but I'd have to look. And I think the reason it looks really cool is because each segment is three pieces, aluminum, plastic, and aluminum. So it really makes it look complex and sophisticated, in my opinion, versus if it was just one you know, single material, because it looks like I did a lot more work than I did. The material kind of adds to it without me doing anything because I'm just putting one piece in there, but it happens to be three layers. So this is a um, Celtic knot glued up. And when I mentioned before, you can make a cut and then replace the material. The reason that's important with this is, and I'm no Celtic knot expert because I've only made about 15 of them, but my first one was by far my best and I had no idea it was that easy. I number the, the blank, one, two, three, four, four, and you essentially make four cuts, that's it. So this looks like a bunch of different pieces. This is just four pieces. You make this cut, and it's a 45 degree angle on this particular one. So you make that cut, you glue in the material, you trim it up, sand it flush, you rotate it to number two, which is sand it off. You make the same exact cut in the same direction. You glue in the material, trim it off, sand it, Rotate it number three, again, same exact cut, sand it, replace it, sand it. Number four, yada yada, and that's what you have here. So it looks like there's a piece of material here and here on the top and bottom, but they're not. They're the bottoms of the angle. So like the bottom here goes across this way, and the bottom here goes across this way. So it's really kind of cool how it ends up working, and this turns exactly into this. 
So it's really neat how this square looking X, I mean, you can see the X, but then you get the arcs, which are these. So it really is cool how it changes from that to that. And I don't know if anybody would be interested in a, in a thing we could do a, a live stream on just making this type of blank, but the, the whole point of this is the material is what I was talking about. All right, hold on, we got some, we got some chitter chatter in the chat here. Oh, we got Tanya in Alabama, Michael Albro. I'm not familiar with this guy, but Fortnite. How do you have time to play that game and run a business? I don't think I said Fortnite. However, Michael, I was on yesterday. I just mentioned if you just came in, I was doing some live streams for uh, Record Power in uh, various countries, and one of them did say, "We'll do it in a fortnight." And I had no idea. I don't know what that means. So if anybody knows what a fortnight is, let me know. And they often say, what do they say? They say a lot of things. I, I'm just like, I just shake my head and I'm like, uh-huh. But I don't know what they're talking about. The, the Australians and the, the guys from the UK, they have a lot better language or different language than us, I guess. It's pretty funny. Hey, Kathy. What? Two weeks. Oh, Tim said a fortnight is two weeks. Is it like two weeks from whenever you say it? Or is it on a schedule? Oh, he left. He must have, oh, Daniel said the same thing. So, so if I say I'll do it in a fortnight, does that mean I'll do it from two weeks from now? Or is it like Sunday to Sunday or Monday to Monday? Uh, hi, Matt and Kathy, how are you guys? I don't know, you guys, you guys are pretty good. So anyway, um, I don't know what I was talking about. Uh, this is funny. I'm a little delirious today. I've pooped from doing those those long demos, but um, we'll maybe do a, a Celtic knot in the future if somebody's interested, or more than somebody, but somebody's. But that's how that looks. All right. <clears throat> now, what we want to do is make a blank. This is what our blank is going to look like. And in just a sec, I'm going to go over the table and kind of show it to you. Now, this looks really rough and jagged and sharp and all kinds of stuff and we're gonna take care of that uh, and I'll show you how all right okay looks like we got a, a few people in each place so that's pretty cool we got like 50 on YouTube and 20 on uh, Facebook so very cool thanks for coming in guys I do appreciate you guys watching because sometimes it might not make a lot of sense but that's okay all right, so let's jump into this. This is gonna be, today's thing is not gonna be turning. There's plenty of turning videos that we've done and we'll do turning in the future. But like I said, we gotta keep your anticipation built on that. So we're gonna make these blanks and I'm gonna show you a couple of really key things. They're not hard at all. I mean, obviously you can see it's just some pieces glued up, but there's a couple of little key factors that really make a difference. So let me jump over to the table and we will go from there. Okay, so put my phone where I can see it here, hopefully. Now, like I said, this is our goal, and the beauty of these is they look really, they look really kind of a mess, but that's okay, because when they're done, they look not a mess, and that's the idea. So we want to go from pieces to this to this to a finish pen all in a fairly short amount of time. The beauty of this technique, like many, is you can make a really cool pen in a fairly short amount of time. It's not like other projects that might take, you know, weeks or months. And so you can do this fairly short. So what I've got here is just a bunch of cutoffs. And sometimes I save really cool burls or pieces that I just don't want to throw away because they look cool, but they're too short for a, a pen. You can always glue multiple blanks together, but this is a way to do it that really works well. So what you've got to do is prep some materials. Now, if you are using cutoffs, you wanna cut some pieces that are a little bigger for the middle perhaps, and you, you don't have to do it this way, this is just for this style. And then maybe some ends, or you could, 
you could do a little piece in the middle and big ends, you know, for all that matters. I guess you could do a, oh, that's a bolt action drill. But you want to prep some pieces. You want to drill them to whatever tube you're going to use. This is a Monarch Grande that I'm building here. So you want to have it drilled 27 64ths. And then you want to take the segmenting material and you want to cut this into little one inch strips and then cut your strips into little one inch squares. You could do it much smaller. I like one inch because it gives me something to hold in my vise when I'm drilling and when I'm cutting it on the bandsaw, my, you know, nothing's too, too close. But I prep, I just usually have a bunch of these little squares cut and then I'll go, if I'm making a bunch of monarchs or bolt actions or whatever, I'll drill holes for those pens and then I will have the tube ready for it. Now two really important factors is your your cutoffs and your holes need to be really square. If you have this cut and it's a jagged angled cut, when you go to put this segmenting sheet up there, it might fit this way, but then when you put the other side on, you're gonna have gaps. Let's see if there's any side that's rough I could put. Okay, there you go. So I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but you don't want a gap like that. So what I like to do is cut several small pieces, several mid-sized pieces, and then I'll go to my sander and on a square, I'll sand that flush. So I have one good side typically. So I know if I put it up and it's got a gap, I flip it over because I usually have one good side. And in this case, it's this side. So you wanna make sure both your end caps are square on at least one side and your middle pieces, whatever you decide for them to be, needs to be square on both sides because you're gonna be gluing right up against it. Now, let me check the chat and grab some water here. All right, looking good. Can't get enough water today. Now, what's really cool about these, and what I, I kind of like about this method is I can kind of mock up what I'm gonna do. You know, I haven't prepped anything yet, but I can stick these on here and say, hey, this blue kind of looks cool, or it doesn't, I wanna put something else on it, I wanna use the burl, and so on and so forth. So you can kind of, before you even touch it with glue, you can see how the, the pattern will look. A lot of times I'll make the front end of the pen a little thinner on this end, and a little thicker on the back loop. I just like the way that flows on a pen, so that's kind of my thing. Um, but you can do really any pattern you want. There's definitely no rules here. And we don't need any rules. So before I, before I do the glue up, I usually uh, have my things squared from the, the belt sander. I'm sorry, the disc sander. I keep saying belt. And then I've got my segmenting pieces cut square and drilled. And when you do this, you're going to notice that there's burrs on each side where the cuts are. And actually, it's raised in the center where the drill went through. But I just use a sanding block or a sandpaper. And it doesn't take much, about probably 10 seconds. And you just want to feel the whole thing. Um, even the edges are important because let's say your material was a little bigger and it went to the edge. You don't want it to push and gap it for you. So make sure the whole thing's flush. I mean, that didn't take but a few seconds. Got a little bit more right there. And I'm just exactly what you see, swirling it around here. No rhyme or reason. Flip it over. All right. And if you're using these sanding blocks, you can blow them out with air and clear all this dust out of here real easy. You're, you're sanding a little bit of aluminum, but mostly the, the paint and the raised stuff. These are powder coated. So that paint is pretty tough, but you can see that looks pretty good. So there's one prepped. So I'll prep both sides. All right, flip that. I just like to feel the edge, make sure it's all good. And keep in mind, like I showed those larger blanks, um, those are for pepper grinders, but you can use it for handles. Bottle openers look really cool with the, the inlay material. We've done pizza cutters, 
um, all kinds of different stuff with them. So that looks pretty good, feels good. And now when I mock it up, I'm gonna actually use these that I was playing with here. Uh, I like to kind of have a line just for my own sake of when I glue. I'll put a little line on each side just to keep me where I think I want to be. This one I'll try to make even. We'll see how that goes. But you just need to uh, have, a, have an idea of where that'll be. But I like to mock it up completely once it's sanded just to make sure that everything does fit flush and flat. And then if you really press it together, that's when you'll see if there's any gaps in there. And this one looks pretty flat. So that should look kind of cool. It's kind of a, a blue dyed stabilized wood and then it's got white and blue in the resin. So that might look really cool. And I just take it apart and lay it out so it's easy to see. Now I will need my flex, or not flex, excuse me, my regular CA. I'm using mercury thick. as well as Mercury Accelerator. Because one thing about a lot of segmenting is you, a lot of people use different clamps and jigs and all kinds of stuff. I like this method because I don't use any clamps. I don't use any jigs. I can make this and like 10 minutes later I can turn it if I want. But what I'm gonna do is build it from the end this way. And there's a, a key way to do it. So this is my flat side. This is the side I want here but I don't want to just push it on. Uh, if I do that, I'm going to squeegee that glue that I put on the tube into the way here, and it's going to create, you know, that channel, that angled bridge, so to speak, between the, the piece and the tube. And then when I go to put this on, it's not going to fit up flush. It's going to have a little gap there from the glue. So what I like to do is put some glue on. Again, mercury thick. And I use thick, you could use any brand. I use thick because um, it gives me more time to work. I'm gonna put this on backwards from the other side and I'm gonna pull the piece into the tube and I'm just spinning it to get the glue all around in there. And when I think it's in the place I want, and I'm just using my line, it's starting to stick already, which is fine. I'm gonna spray it and it should cure relatively quickly. And now I don't have any glue on the inside of the, the piece here. It's hopefully just on the tube and on the outside. Now, a couple words of warning. When you do this and you're spraying accelerator on your, your glue, make sure it's not on your fingers because it will really, really burn. If you get that glue on here and you spray it, you're gonna accelerate it on your finger just like on your tube or your, your wood and it doesn't feel good, so. Be aware of that. Now I'm just gonna work my way across this. So I'm gonna put my glue on the resin piece in this case. Come on, get out of there. And I'm gonna press this up. And I'm not worried about the glue this time because I'm squeegeeing it into the, the, the end piece here. And I'm just gonna hold this for a minute. And I did just spray that with accelerator. So if I'm not careful, if I move too slow, it might start to go off before I'm ready and it might not be flush. So that, that went off pretty nicely. So there we go. And you can still see no glue on the inside, which is okay. And now I'm gonna coat the, the tube up here and the piece because I'm gonna be putting this big, big guy on here. Oh, look at that, I did get glue on there. Oh, see it stop? It's cause I have a little spot of glue right there. All right, so you just wanna take an X-Acto knife or a scrap of segmenting material. Get that off of there. Nope. Let me grab a tool here. So this is actually a reamer, but I don't have anything handy. Nope, that won't work. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I wonder if I dripped that and didn't didn't see it, oh, there it is. Didn't see it happen. There's a clean drop of, okay, now we're good. So that was, I mean, that is good to see. It's just pretty easy. Uh, just was stopping it right there. All right, so put the glue on here, put it on the tube, 
And then now I like to give it a spin, get that glue all around in there. And then I'm just going to, again, press it and hold it for, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds. And then I can spray it if I want. And then I'm going to do my other side. Looks good. So you can see how quickly this can go. Um, if you're not getting glue on stuff, you're not supposed to. Just nice and press it nice and easy. Now you could, if you're quick, um, you could assemble this real quick, glue it all up and assemble it and put a clamp on it. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not how I do it. So I'm going to keep pushing on that while I put glue on here. So do whatever works for you. As with most of my YouTube videos, I uh, kind of just show what I do and what works for me. It's not necessarily the only way or the right way, but it works, so that's how, why I do it. So I'm just going to hold this. Hopefully I don't have any glue on my finger. Ooh, nope. It's cold. And I'm just going to hold it for just a second, and then it'll be ready to go. Now, obviously, if you're not in any hurry and you can let this sit for a little bit, that certainly won't hurt a thing. It'll actually be good. But if you want to turn it, you can go for it. Now, I always look around these edges and make sure there's a good glue line. Not that that matters for the finished pen because you're going to turn most of this away. But should I catch a tool or something on here and really violently smack it, a little bit of extra glue might help me keep it from blowing out. So I'll go around there and put a little extra glue, spray it. I call it cheap insurance. CA is cheap insurance here. So just keep doing that and that'll help you. Now this is fairly large and jagged. Uh, we would square the ends up as normal and then we can take it to the lathe. Now there's another little thing I want to show you before we turn on the lathe that really is a, a helpful thing. So if there's any questions, throw them out there. I'm going to head over here. All right, we're back. All right, any questions going? We got Mike, Simon, Annie. Annie said she'd love to see the Celtic demo. Well, I'll plan that in the in the near future because. Uh, It'll be some different camera angles because it will use a saw, at least the miter saw or the table saw or a band saw, I don't know. But uh, it's kind of cool to see because it's so simple. I, I had turned for years and I don't know why I never tried it, but uh, when I did, I was surprised how fun and easy it was. So that was good. Okay, so once I've got this squared up, I could jump right on the lathe. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're careful, it's not going to be a big deal. I like to do one other thing. And you can do this with any anything you have. Um, hand sander, belt sander, disc sander, whatever. We have a new product. Called, we call it the sanding disc. It mounts right on the chuck. So usually we use this when we're turning. So we just don't have to go clear across the shop that 10 feet to the sander. Uh, but you just put it in here, tighten it up, and you've got a sander here. You guys have probably seen me, if you watch these very often, you've probably seen me sharpen on this or do something on this. Uh, we've been testing them for a while, and now they're finally available. Oh, I don't need to. But you can actually put your tool rest up and sharpen your tool real quick and easy. It's kind of fun. But what I'm going to do is just quickly round the edges over. Now, make sure you have some dust collection or, or whatever you need. I'm gonna just do this real quickly to show you all how this works. I'm gonna run it about 1500 and those sharp corners, I just wanna take those off. And because they're aluminum and plastic, they move off pretty quick and easy. You can see how it went from fairly square and sharp to rounded in no time. You know what, maybe we'll do the Celtic Knot one in like a fortnight or two fortnights or ten fortnights. I don't know. 
but there's going to be a Fortnite in there. So that, boy, it's hard to point at the right spot. And you can always take down just that material. And I'll just take off that aluminum. Obviously, be really careful with your fingers. You don't want to sand them, although that doesn't really do much. So I probably am thinking about, uh, if I was on my disc sander, obviously it's a 12 inch versus a 5 inch. It'd probably be faster, but just convenience sake, this is good. Ever use brass as the inlay? Absolutely. Um, you can get some different brass and copper and even uh, aluminum and nickel in really nice thin material, and you can definitely use that. It doesn't cut quite as easy as the aluminum, but uh, you can use like shears to cut squares out and it'll work just fine. And if you do that, stack it up really good and clamp it, and you can drill through them all at once, as long as you're not using a brad point drill bit. Uh, if you're using a regular twist drill, you can go right through them all. So that works out really well. Uh, that's a great question, Mr. Ziggler. But uh, different inlays look cool. And what's cool with those is they're really thin versus these are two millimeter and three millimeter. So you could do even wavy stuff with the, the thin copper. That's a whole nother topic. So this is pretty much what we're going for here. It's rounded, rounded enough that it will uh, turn fairly easy. And then it's just simple turning from here. You would want to use uh, probably whatever you're most comfortable with. We like carbide with these. Not that traditional tools can't handle the aluminum because it's no problem, but you do need to sharpen it fairly regularly because the aluminum will dull it. Um, but it works just fine. I use the Easy Wood Tools Mini with the radius tip on these and they turn beautifully. So that's what I do for that. So that is how you make this blank. Super simple, I know. And uh, hopefully you'll give it a try. This material is just called segmenting material and it comes in the two thicknesses. There's no color choices or anything like that, unfortunately. So it's pretty simple that, as far as that goes. Are there any questions or anything I can answer for anybody? Let's see what we got. Here's the other one. So you can see going from the same size squares it makes it a lot easier. That's funny, this is the opposite. You can tell when I cut this, just cutting this scrap up, I cut that plank of gens, there's the body, and then I cut little pieces for the ends. Oh, and that's Kokoboro. I didn't even plan that. Must have been subconsciously. So these are just inverted. So this would look cool as a set, um, having Kokobolo, resin Kokobolo, and then the reverse. That would be a kind of a fun thing to do. You can kind of interchange the pieces. So I will post pictures of these. Uh, we probably will turn these next week because obviously we're going into a holiday. I think that's why a lot of people weren't um, watching and making stuff this week because maybe they were prepping. Uh, Ann asked if we're carrying any other segmenting material. I'm still trying to get other segmenting material. We used to get from uh, Mr. Gissy the, the segmenting plastic that he used for all his segments. Uh, but I need to contact him and see if he's still got it because that stuff's really cool. But we're always looking. Unfortunately, the manufacturer that makes this just makes it in one color. So we can't get them to do any other colors without committing to an enormous amount. So that's kind of the, the issue when we're, we're a small niche uh, of turners here, so we don't have the, the buying power that a lot of other industries do. But so the answer, I guess, is kind of like kind of 
we always want to carry more and we're looking for more, but right now it's just not happening at this time. Okay. Well, I know that was kind of a quick one, but pre-holiday, uh, I didn't want to go too in-depth. Next week, oh, since you're still watching, this is cool. Next week, um, be sure and check out our Wednesday special. So the whole month of June, we're prepping for 4th of July. So hope that kind of entices your interest. It's going to be pretty cool. We've got some cool stuff planned. Uh, we'll have some cool demos throughout the month of June in prep in preparation of 4th of July. So I'll get a red, white, and blue shirt or something too to just really make the festivities explode. And we'll go from there. But it's going to be really cool. All right, if there's no other questions, I think I'm going to let you all go. And you can, you know what, take tomorrow off. Start your weekend early and uh, have a great holiday weekend. All right. Bye, Kathy and Matt. If I just stood here and waved by and didn't say anything, how long would it take for the last person to leave? I don't think I have the time for that or the energy. <laughs> Maybe on a different different day. All right, thanks, guys.